Hello, I'm Sarah L, and welcome to the third episode of Boat in New Zealand. We've got another great show. It's full of stories from the November edition of the magazine, including the latest boat tests, reviews and news. First up, one of the great things about working for Boat in New Zealand is that we get to hang out on some pretty amazing boats. I recently had the pleasure of spending a few hours aboard the super luxurious Monte Carlo 52, which is big on size and style. Hi, I'm Sarah from Boat in New Zealand and today we're out here on the Waitemata Harbour checking out the Monte Carlo 52. It's a luxury brand produced by Benatar Group and while this may be a rather large boat, it's actually the smallest of its type. Let's have a look. So at the stern is what is known as the Teak Beach, this gigantic boarding platform. This can carry 350 kilos worth of tender or jet ski. It has movable chocks for uh, whatever you want to stow on here. And then in the back there's this gigantic lazarette. In the charter market this can be used as a skipper's cabin. You also shove your kids in here but also plenty of storage. It's also accessible from above out of the cockpit. The boarding platform can be hydraulically lowered to below water level. There's also a ladder which folds out of that boarding platform. So for a big boat there's not an enormous cockpit but there's certainly plenty of space. There's this very large sofa across the transom here. There can also be a barbecue that fits here. This area can also be enclosed in clears and the new owners are intending to do that. Over on this side we have the controls the, uh, for the Volvo pod system for manoeuvring and parking and the controls for the platform up and down. Accessed through the cockpit floor are the pair of Volvo D6 IPS 650s. They're 480 horsepower engines with an IPS pod drive. These stackable sliding doors lead us here into the galley, which runs the full width of the boat. We've got a full domestic size fridge and freezer on this side. Storage, you can have a dishwasher in there if you want. On this side, this is a convection microwave oven, and we have a glass induction cooktop. Single sink, plenty of storage, and soft closed drawers. So the big star of this huge saloon are these simply enormous windows. No mullions, just one huge pane with that nice curved top touch. So there's just so much visibility here whether you're either resting and relaxing or if you're driving. The television pops up out of the cabinetry on the starboard side and these table leaves fold out from cocktails to dinner. So there are three places you can drive the boat from. Here at the main helm station those pod controls in the cockpit for manoeuvring and docking and then also upstairs in the flybridge where we'll have a look a bit later on. Here there are a couple of gigantic screens, they're 16 inch Garmin's which have your chart plotting and other information you want to have there. Here we've got the reversing camera on and the depth sounder. Other key points about this is here we have the controls for the Seakeeper gyro system. Now that's a, uh, a gyroscope that's in the centre of the boat which stops the motion from being too extreme, so either at rest or when you're driving, it just tries to correct that side to side roll and it's really made a difference to the performance of this boat. It also has a zip wake uh, automatic trim tab system. The controls here we have for the bow thruster, the throttles and the IPS pod for direction. We'll see more of the Monte Carlo later in the show. Now let's talk outboards. Here's a look at the pros and cons of traditional petrol powered small outboards compared to electric motors. Welcome to the electric motor shootout for Boating New Zealand. Today we were testing the Torquedo Travel 1003 portable electric motor and the EPRA Propulsion Spirit 1.0. To compare these we have the Mercury 3.3 horsepower two stroke 
Mercury outboards have been around for years. They're regarded as the workhorse of the industry. They're just about indestructible and they're economical to run. Comparing that, we had the two electric motors, uh, slightly reduced power outputs. These are 1000 watt uh, motors uh, with built-in batteries. So one complete unit. There's no separate fiddling with batteries or cables. Very, very simple to operate. You put them on, you connect them up, push the button, twist and you're going. Going in reverse with electric motors is even easier than with a petrol powered motor. You just twist the throttle the other way and you go in reverse. Simple as that. Now these have got some quite clever electronics built into them. They have a, a kill switch, just like a old fashioned motor. Now this is a magnetic switch which just sits on top of the motor. If you, you put this around your wrist, if you fall off it kills the motor. They also have a GPS built into them. They can tell you the speed. They can tell you how many hours you've got remaining on the battery. Um, what your current power consumption is, and you can adjust it accordingly. In terms of packing them up, these motors all come apart. The cable comes off, and the battery section comes off the motor. Simple as that. That folds up, fits into a bag, put it in the back of your car. No smell, no mess, no uh, fuel dripping out, um, no smoke when they're running, and absolutely silent, as you'll hear on the video, or won't hear on the video. These motors, of course, differ in specifications. The Mercury 3.3 horsepower weighs 13 kilograms. The Torquedo weighs 14 and a half kilograms. And the EPRO Propulsion weighs 18 kilograms. The Mercury retails for just over $1,000. The EPRO Propulsion is just under $3,000. And the Torquedo uh, is just a touch over $4,000. So unfortunately, there is a price to pay for eco-friendly, for no emissions, for no smells, no fumes, no waste. And perhaps if you are boating in one of the pristine lakes, this is the way to go. Something worth considering is that two strokes are getting increasingly out of favor. There's many places in Europe where you're no longer allowed to use two stroke. Even in Lake Wanaka, they're actively phasing out two strokes because of the pollution in the water. What I love about my Yamaha is just that continued reliability. I turn the key and it just goes. I spend hundreds of hours at sea and it just gets me out there, gets the job done and gets me home safely every single time. The ultimate fishing system starts with Lorentz HDS Live. The best fish finding tools, from chirp sonar and fish reveal to side scan and down scan imaging, and complete touchscreen control from your trolling motor to your big motor. If you're wanting to treat yourself to experiencing the adventure of boating in your own vessel, have a look at these quality motor yachts currently being marketed by the team at the Motor Yacht Centre in Auckland. Welcome back to Boating New Zealand. We all know the America's Cup is as much about technology as it is about sailing. Emirates Team New Zealand has partnered with Spark and its 5G network. Now sailing fans have the opportunity to see behind the scenes of how 5G is helping Team New Zealand to hopefully win the cup. So today Sparks launched our 5G race zone down here at Emirates Team New Zealand. The aim of it is to provide New Zealanders with a combination of both 5G and sailing brought together to provide immersive and multi-sensory experiences. It will appeal to anyone from kids right through to adults. So like so many things with Emirates Team New Zealand, they start from ideas, a clean sheet of paper, which is where this came from. And, and Spark have done an amazing job of kind of, of bringing it to life. There's nothing that I'm aware of in the country. I mean, I, this is Disneyland, yachting Disneyland. And I think it's going to be enormously popular uh, with families. This is, this is an interactive display, but, but along with the in interactivity, there's this 270 screen where you can effectively, you're on board the boat. We put a, a 360 camera on the boat. We went sailing one day and we shot it so you can immerse yourself within it. We've got the America's Cup here. You can have a picture with the America's Cup. 
uh, or a picture of the guys are all here in digital form, learning about the weather, uh, building the boat on the computer. Oh, it's super cool. Um, what I'm most excited about is that uh, we've got literally the Team New Zealand simulator in here. This is something that's been under development for years. Uh, we used it very extensively through the AC50 campaign. There's not many people that get the chance to uh, go on a, an AC75 in real life, but um, I think this is definitely the closest you can get to it. Spark moved mountains to get us on 5G. We were the first company in New Zealand to, be, to start using 5G and we were sending information back into the base from out in the wider matter and then into the Gulf itself. We're funding a schools program that will help build awareness for the different types of technology that are out there and hopefully get kids excited about the different types of technology that both Spark and also with sailing can provide New Zealanders. We're opening it just in time for the school holidays and it is totally free for both our customers and for the whole of New Zealand. I can't wait for the America's Cup to begin. Also out on Auckland Harbour recently have been four new Grand Prix race boats, the Melges 40, which have been given a new lease on life down under. Five of these Melges 40s, designed by Botan Partners Naval Architects, were originally built to be raced on a European circuit. But that never really got off the ground, and these near new boats were looking for a new home. Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron Commodore Aaron Young and former Commodore Steve Mayer are among four new local owners. After their yacht's checkmate and clockwork arrived in the spring, they quickly started duelling it out on Auckland Harbour. The Melges have low freeboard, no cabin, a huge cockpit, twin rudders and a deep canting keel. While originally designed for windward leeward racing, with the addition of some new north reaching sails, they are proving pretty handy racing around the harbour and the Hauraki Gulf, forming the core of a new 40-footer racing division. The first big test for these new boats will be Bay of Islands Sailing Week in January, where all four boats will be competing for bragging rights. I had a really great evening out sailing on the Melges 40. They are lots of fun to sail and highly technical. Now let's go back and have a look at some more of the Monte Carlo 52. So to take things to another level, let's head up to the flybridge. And we're really high up here and the views are amazing. Visibility all around. It's got a sunroof that pulls right across if you do need shade or we've got it open today. Here at the back, we've got space for a barbecue. There's also a fridge in there for entertaining and all this amazing space. Up here forward is this other helm station. Again, with a pair of Garmin screens and the controls you need, throttle, IPS, bow thruster, and the zip wake. So you've got everything you need right here, and a swivelly seat. And while we're on the theme of this boat being big, this is the simply enormous master suite. It's underneath the saloon, running right across the boat. And they've designed this quite cleverly because they've fitted in the ensuite and the walk-in wardrobe to fit around where the engine bay would be in the cockpit. In keeping with the size of this cabin, there's also a very large bathroom with a walk-in shower.
the forward cabin is a double, but it can be split into a twin if you've got more people on board, kids or family. It has these nice touch screens for adjusting the cabin and ambient light, its own television and hanging locker storage. It also has access to what doubles as the day head with the shower. There's lots of space in here, plenty of headroom and a fully enclosed shower compartment. On the starboard side down below there's also this twin cabin which these beds can come together to form a double. It's also got lots of hanging locker storage, plenty of headroom and nice through hole windows. So there's two words that come to mind when I think about this boat, big and luxury. It's just over 16 metres long so there's a lot of boat there and everything is very high spec, very luxurious, very comfortable. This boat comes in with all its spec at around $2.2 million but you're getting a lot of boat for that money and it will certainly be the most comfortable, luxurious platform you can imagine for cruising the Gulf. What I love about my Yamaha is just that continued reliability. As a commercial charter fishing operator now, I've been using Yamaha for quite a few years. I spend hundreds of hours at sea, quite often with people that aren't very experienced on the water. I turn the key and it just goes. And it just gets me out there, gets the job done and gets me home safely every single time. The ultimate fishing system starts with Lorentz HDS Live. The best fish finding tools, from chirp sonar and fish reveal to side scan and down scan imaging. And complete touchscreen control, from your trolling motor to your big motor. If you're wanting to treat yourself to experiencing the adventure of boating in your own vessel, have a look at these quality motor yachts currently being marketed by the team at the Motor Yacht Centre in Auckland. Welcome back to Boating New Zealand. A new release from iconic Kiwi brand Haynes Hunter is always big news. Such big news we've put it on the cover this month. John Eichelsheim was excited to get aboard the new SF635. Today we're going to take a look at Haynes Hunter's much anticipated brand new SF635. It's the model that replaces the 600 that's been around for quite a long time. Uh, it's a really special boat for Haynes Hunter and we're really looking forward to going for a ride. So Haynes have gone to a lot of effort with this helm station. Now I have to say I really like this, this is a very very comfortable helm station, it's, it's really ergonomic. You know at first glance this wheel, nice wooden wheel by the way, but you know it, it seems a little bit low. In fact it's not, you've got really really good vision of, of the Simrad, the 12 inch Simrad here on the, um, on the console. Uh, the fascia, it's a, it's a lovely uh, acrylic fascia and, and the, the Simrad and also the new Yamaha gauges have been um, flush mounted into that into that fascia and it looks really smart. The very compact uh, VEC controls from Yamaha so they're, they're nicely set in and they've they thought about a few things you know there's a cubby hole here for the cell phone so that it doesn't get lost or roll around. Uh, we've got charging points both sides for the passenger as well. Um, nice bit of shade here uh, over the fascia to, to keep things uh, to keep the glare off off the screens, it's, uh, it works very well indeed. And um, look, I have to say, this is one of the more comfortable helm positions that I've sat in in recent times, which is a good thing because you, you really do feel inclined to throw this boat around. It's an awful lot of fun to drive. It, it, it's really, really secure on the water, turns 
beautifully. There's no pitching around or dumping and diving as, as it's going around. It really is quite a, a nice handling boat. They've certainly got that side of things very right indeed. So the forward cabin's quite a good size. They've really made the, the opening wide enough to get in and out of very, very easily. And, uh, you know, you've got a decent sized V-berth there with, with an infill. You could sleep in there quite happily. So this is a, comp a completely new model for Haynes, absolutely new from the drawing board up. Um, having said that, there's still a lot of things about this boat that are familiar from other Haynes Hunter boats. So any boat in the Haynes Hunter family has some of these features. And very wisely, Haynes Hunter have kept them. Now, one of them is this rear seat arrangement, which, uh, which is a feature of, of Haynes boats for years and years and years. It works particularly well. The bases of the seats are actually fish bins or storage bins. You can pull them out and the, the seat backs are hinged. There's storage behind them, or in the case of the seat that I'm sitting on now, excellent access to battery switches, um, circuit breakers, all of those things. Really nice and tidy. It's, it's a a system they've used for years and it works extremely well and they've wisely kept it with this new model. So one of the advantages you get with a boat like this, a totally new design, not only is this boat a little bit beamier, the, the way that it's constructed is, is completely modern as well. So Haynes Hunter have taken the next step. There are, there, there's no timber in the floors anymore. Um, this is all uh, composite floors. Foam filled as well throughout, so it makes it a nice, quiet ride. Uh, it really does help with, uh, with the noise on the water. And it also adds some, some structural integrity. So, you know, those are things that you get with these new models, the new Haynes Hunter models. And this has got the full suite of improvements. The seating layout, again, is quite familiar if, you're, uh, if, if you know Haynes Hunter boats. Um, this is sort of a, a king and queen seat, extremely comfortable. Love the quality of the stitching, the way that the seats look, but more importantly, the way they feel. They are exceedingly comfortable seats. We talked about electric outboards earlier in the show, but now let's scale that up a bit. The Hurley 3400 Powercat takes electric to a whole new level. We are lucky enough to be here in fabulous Tauranga looking at the new Hurley 3400 electric Powercat with range extender. Let's see what's inside. This Roger Hill designed 3400 model is the culmination of four years development. And the key feature of this boat is the fully electric drive. Twin 100 kilowatt electric motors push the super efficient hull to a top speed that is a shade over 20 knots. The onboard battery bank will allow her to run completely under battery power for a couple of hours at a more modest cruising speed. Because boating should not have limits, the range extender system includes a 120 kilowatt permanent magnet diesel generator, which gives her an estimated cruising range up to an astonishing 2,500 nautical miles at 8 knots. That from a modest diesel tank with a 640 litre capacity. She can run continuously at 14 knots using just 0.73 litres of diesel per nautical mile or at 9 knots using just half a litre. Sports mode lets her run on batteries and generator and gives her maximum speed. Hence this boat offers just about the best of everything. A good top speed for a boat the size, a large total range when required and completely silent running when you prefer to be emission free. The cabin roof is covered with 14 high efficiency solar panels providing self-charging capacity for the extensive list of onboard accessories. These include fridge, freezer, running hot and cold fresh water, large screen TV, stereo system, navigation electronics and of course inset LED lights everywhere including below the waterline. The galley is compact and efficient with a sink, fridge and stove unit with a double hob and oven. The hob and oven are a Wallace diesel combo stove unit, which means that neither petrol nor LPG needs to be carried on this boat. Opposite the galley is a triangular dining table and L-shaped couch that faces the wide open rear saloon doors, and it is out through those doors that most time will be spent. An island console out in the large cockpit area provides a bait board, live bait well with tuna tubes, sink, rubbish bin, storage lockers, and saltwater wash down hose. The helm station, just slightly to starboard of the centre line of the main cabin, provides a plush two-person helm seat that would be comfortable for even extended sessions at the helm. Given the technology that is under the hood, the helm display is surprisingly simple. 
The helm is connected hydraulically to conventional rudders in each hull, and there is a unified twin throttle control that would not look out of place in an episode of Star Trek. The propulsion system is supplied by electric boats. This includes the motors, controllers, helm display and controls, batteries and battery management systems. This is a simply stunning boat. With leading edge propulsion, this boat gives away nothing in size or luxury. Electric boats are undoubtedly the way of the future. As Norman says, it seems like electric power really is the way of the future. Now to wrap up the show, let's go back to the Haynes Hunter for some more on the water action. Under the pedestal helm seat, of course that is adjustable fore and aft, swivels as well. If we have this clever idea, it's a pull out IC Tech bin, little seat on the back and it, you can open it he says confidently um, I partially open it so you know you don't have to pull it all the way out to throw your fish in there or to access your drinks or your food or whatever nice idea pushes away out of the way if you want to you can leave the rear seats at home altogether gives yourself a bit more room in the cockpit if fishing's your thing uh, again very well designed well thought out um, the people at Haynes Hunter understand fishing very well, so these are angled correctly, they're not going to get rods in your way. Um, the whole bim bimini top, in fact, is, is very, very uh, solid. It's designed to fold down for garaging, make it easier to store this boat. So this particular boat has got a Yamaha 175 uh, four-stroke outboard. Lots of get up and go. The, the model's actually spec for engines between 150 and 200 horsepower. I can't imagine you'd want 200 horsepower on this boat unless you really are a, a speed freak, a petrol head. But uh, with this particular engine, you know, uh, you could expect uh, close to 40 knots performance. It's certainly got lots and lots of get up and go. Uh, this boat is fitted with a, a one kilowatt through hull transducer. It's the um, high performance transducer that gives you all of the features that the Simrad 12 inch uh, NSS Evo 3 um, gives you. It's like, like down scan and structure scan that uh, the people have come to expect and are extremely useful if you're an angler. Lots of things about this boat are really familiar as well. Um, the, the teak trim here on the combings, that's something that, that Haynes Hunter has done for years. It's a nice touch, gives, adds a bit of warmth, adds a bit of class. Um, built-in rod holders underneath the, uh, the gunnels, that's another nice touch. Again, a, a simple system that works extremely well. Good quality through combing rod holders. Haynes Hunter also supplies a, a, a very nice uh, moulded bait table that slots into the, the rear rod holders for when you're fishing. So this is a significant boat for Haynes Hunter. Uh, it has a real quality feel. Um, I really like the way that it's laid out. I love the way it handles and performs, and I particularly like the helm position. It's one of the best I can remember uh, experiencing in recent times. I think this boat will be a real winner for the company. Um, it's, a, it's a really good replacement for the 600. It's been, that's been a great model for them for many, many years, but this is a worthy replacement, and I see it doing particularly well. That's it for episode three of Boating New Zealand. I hope you're feeling inspired and energised for a great summer ahead. I'm Sarah L and I'll see you next time. The ultimate fishing system starts with Lorentz HDS Live. The best fish finding tools, from chirp sonar and fish reveal to side scan and down scan imaging. 
and complete touchscreen control from your trolling motor to your big motor. What I love about my Yamaha is just that continued reliability. I turn the key and it just goes. I spend hundreds of hours at sea and it just gets me out there, gets the job done and gets me home safely every single time. If you're wanting to treat yourself to experiencing the adventure of boating in your own vessel, have a look at these quality motor yachts currently being marketed by the team at the Motor Yacht Centre in Auckland.